informasikan kepada Bapak Ibu para tamu undangan. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to inform you to take your respective seats because shortly we will begin our agenda. Thank you. Sidang Pleno Khusus Penyampaian Laporan The Special Plenary Session for the Submission of 2021 Annual Report Thursday, 10th of February 2022 Begins Hadirin dimohon berdiri yang mulia Majelis Hakim Konstitusi. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. The constitutional justices enter the courtroom. Presiden Republik Indonesia. The President of the Republic of Indonesia. The Chief Justice and Deputy Chief Justice of the Constitutional Court enter the hall. Lagu kebangsaan The National Anthem Indonesia Raya
Dipersilakan duduk kembali. Please be seated. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning and greetings for everyone. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Indonesia, the Constitutional Justices of the Supreme Court, the President and also the, the, the Chair and the members of the Constitutional Courts, members of the AACC. Presidents and members of the Constitutional Courts, members of the African Constitutional Courts Association, CCGA. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors of Friendly Countries, members of the Ethical Council of the Constitutional Justices, chairs of the state institutions, Ministers of the Advanced Indonesia Cabinet and also the Chief of the Indonesia Armed Forces, the Rector and Dean of the Law Faculties, all of the Chief Editors, Journalists, Partners, Counterparts, and all stakeholders of the Constitutional Court and all the Indonesian citizens and everyone in attendance. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, the special session of the Constitutional Court with the agenda for the submission of 2021 annual report is open and declared open for public. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as mandated by law number 24 of 2003 on the Constitutional Court, as amended for the last time by law number 7 on 2020 regarding the Third Amendment to law number 24 of 2003 on the Constitutional Court, the Constitutional Court is obliged to submit their report regularly to the public on the application filed, heard, and ruled, as well as on the financial management and other administrative tasks. Based on that stipulation, in line with the regulation of the Constitutional Court Number 1 of 2020, on the session of the Constitutional Court, the submission of annual report can be done in a non-judicial session through a special plenary session. Therefore, today, on Thursday, the 10th of February 2022, the Constitutional Court is calling for a special plenary session with the agenda for the submission of 2021 annual report. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation, this special plenary session is convened in a hybrid manner, online and offline, attended by the chair of state institutions in an offline manner by still adhering to strict health protocol and attended by the main counterparts of the Constitutional Court in an on, on, online manner and can also be streamed by the public 
from the page or the web page of Constitutional Court and YouTube. Before we go to the main agenda today, let us follow a short clip titled Digital Transformation for Constitutional Upholding. This clip depicts the role and function of the Constitutional Court in carrying out our constitutional tasks and authorities, especially in 2021. Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic that is still ongoing up until now. Sharp clip on the annual report of the Constitutional Court in 2021. The Constitutional Court is a modern and trustworthy judicial institution. Constitutional Court who also uh, meet online and we also have many applications related to elections and the Constitutional Court manage to rule on time or in a timely manner. The electronic judicial system has validated public service in a fast, transparent, and accountable manner. So that the constitutional court can be easily accessed by public using technology. Public can file for their application in an online manner and can also monitor their application using uh, the website. We have also installed smart board system in the constitutional village of Galaisong and constitutional village Bangbang and in West Sumatra. The Constitutional Court also use digital application so that the applicants can uh, actually attend uh, the trial in or online manner. Public can also request for information using the PPID online system. The ruling as the main product of the Constitutional Court should be known by public and public can access it using the web page of the Constitutional Court. As a modern institution, since the beginning, we, uh, the Constitutional Court already has digital culture. We work together with the uh, National Cyber and Crypto Agency for digitization of documents, and all documents uh, are signed digitally. Aside from that, the Constitutional Court work together with the Indonesian National Archive to develop dynamic archiving system to ensure the security of our archive. For the judicial administration, our e-court system is integrated to our archives, so it is easier, easier to access the files, especially for academic purposes. Starting from the COVID-19 pandemic, the use of information technology for uh, non-judicial purposes have been optimized. Meetings, seminars, and everything can be done virtually. Information on uh, legal topics cannot be easily understood by the public. Therefore, we provide information that can be easily understood by uh, public in our web page and YouTube channel. As a state institutions, our activities should be known and accessible to the public. Therefore, our web page is the gateway for public to access all information on 
of the Constitutional Court audited financial report and transparent budget can be accessed by public from our also from our web page mkri.id also opens access for public to uh, access the annual report of the supreme court and we also have monthly bulletin as well as constitutional in indexed constitutional review journal in Scopus for public who would like to access the constitutional court information they can download the click mk application and public can also file their complaints and grievances through the web page of mkri.id Public participation on constitution is very important for the constitutional court. Therefore, we optimize our social media management. Now, all of the information on constitutional court can be accessed through Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And our Instagram also discuss about more diverse topic of constitution to reach wider public. To protect the constitutional rights of the citizen, we launched 64 icon of the constitutional rights of the citizens. We have received a number of awards on the services that we delivered in 2021. We are committed to maintain and improve our performance. As long as there is no openness there will be no justice openness is the spirit of justice the 2021 annual report will be delivered by the chief Justice of the Constitutional Court. Peace be upon you, along with God's mercy and blessings. Good morning and best wishes for all of us. The Honorable and Most Esteemed President of the Republic of Indonesia, Mr. Joko Widodo. The Honorable Heads of State Institutions present here the Chair of the Regional Representative Council, the Honorable Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and the Chairperson of the Judicial Commission, the Honorable Deputy Chief Justice of the Constitutional Court and Constitutional Court Justices, His Excellencies, Presidents, Chairpersons of the Constitutional Courts and equivalent institutions of countries, members of the AACC, Presidents and Chairpersons of Countries, Members of the Asian African Constitutional Court Association, the Leadership and Members of Commission 3 of the Parliament, the, ministries of, the Ministers of the Onward Indonesia Cabinet, and the Commander of the Indonesian Armed Forces, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors of Friendly Countries, partners of the Constitutional Court abroad, rectors and deans of faculties of laws, journalists, and all partners and stakeholders of the Constitutional Court, distinguished audience, 
viewing offline and online. The rapid development of information technology has brought changes in various lines and aspects of life and customs. It has not been the exception that in the field of law enforcement, it has also brought significant changes to services or the public access to the judiciary. Since the founding of the Constitutional Court, the idea of administering a modern, speedy, and simple judiciary has been instilled. This has been the court's endeavor in responding to complaints from society's justice seekers who often communicate the complexity of the litigation process, the uncertainty of procedure, the amount of time consumed and the large amount of money that must be spent to resolve a case. As a result, people became reluctant, or at least would think twice, about utilizing the judiciary. That situation has encouraged the Constitutional Court to have its proceedings to be carried out in a modern manner which was realized by the construction of supporting facilities and infrastructure for the implementation of management and administration of case and trial handling. Along with that, the notion of modern is realized by implementing a management that is transparent and accountable because the good and Fair judicial performance is not only reflected in decisions, but also in the process of case resolution. Distinguished guests. The Constitutional Court's vision to be a modern and reliable judicial institution has at least two main characteristics. First, a judiciary with a work system based on ICT, which is the Information and Communication Technology. And secondly, a judiciary with human resources that possesses a progressive mindset and culture. These two characteristics are key. And as measured by modern and reliable benchmarks, which are then translated into a number of conditions, including first cutting short the time it takes for case handling, number two, staying away from the practice of corruption, collusion, and nepotism, number three, realizing an efficient, effective, transparent, and accountable work process, and number four, improving the quality of services to the public. The steps to build up the mentality and culture in a, establishing an ecosystem of judicial technology and digital transformation were further taken in 2021 covering two areas. First, the Judicial Administration System or JAS to strengthen and optimize case handling Second, the General Administration System, or GAS, which is meant to strengthen the public service administration, both within the court's internal environment and its external services to the public. To maintain and increase public trust, the court puts forward the principle of transparency. Therefore, the special plenary session is a good forum to meet or fulfill the provision of Article 13 of the Constitutional Court Law, but is also based on insincerity, an awareness, and a strong desire to fulfill public rights in relation to how 
the constitutional court carries out its mandate according to its duties and authorities, how it utilizes its budget, and have made all achievements throughout 2021. Distinguished guests, from 2003 to 2021, the court has registered 3,341 cases with the following details. 1,501 cases of judicial review of laws, 29 cases of disputes of authority of state institutions, 676 cases of general election, and 1,135 cases of the elections of regional heads of government. Of these, 3,317 cases have been decided. This means that at the end of 2021, there were 24 cases pending. Furthermore, in the handling of cases in 2021, I can report as follows. The court has handled 277 cases under three jurisdictions consisting of 121 cases of judicial review of laws, three cases of disputes of the authority of state institutions, and 153 cases of regional head elections. Of the 277 cases, seven, uh, 253 cases have been decided. They were 99 cases of judicial reviews, three cases of authority disputes, and 151 decisions in cases of regional elections. Until the end of 2021, 22 cases of judicial review were still being examined, and all cases of disputes of the authority of state institutions have been decided. To try the 277 cases under the three jurisdictions, the court held a total of 924 sessions, consisting of 471 panel sessions and 453 plenary sessions. For cases of judicial review of laws, the court held 388 sessions. Panel sessions were held 128 times. Meanwhile, plenary sessions were held 260 times. In cases of institutional authority disputes, three panel sessions and three plenary sessions were held with the agenda of pronouncement of decisions. To decide the regional election case, 490 sessions were held consisting of 338 panel sessions and 152 plenary sessions. Distinguished guests, in regards to the Judicial Review of Laws in 2021, we can report as follows. Of the 121 cases, 71 cases were registered in 2021, plus 50 cases which were registered in the previous year. Of those 121 cases, the court has decided 99 cases. This means that the court has disposed of 81.82% of all cases in 2021. And 22 cases or equivalent to 18.18% 
were still pending. With regard to the length of time for case resolution in 2021, for judicial review cases and authority dispute cases, the average was 2.97 months per case. From or of the average settlement time for these cases, I should report that from January to April 2021, the court focused on resolving regional election cases, which has a statutory deadline of 45 working days since the registration of application. This is in line with the provision of Article 82 of the court's regulation number two of 2021 concerning the proceedings in cases of judicial review which states that in the event that the court exercises other authorities coinciding with the stages of the proceedings of judicial reviews, then the judicial review proceedings will be adjusted to the implementation or the exercise of the other authorities. On that basis, the court examined tried and decided cases of judicial review of laws after deciding cases of the disputes of the results of simultaneous regional elections in May until December of 2021 or within a period of eight months. Even though it was carried out in eight months and had to postpone proceedings, the court was able to resolve cases in a relatively speedy average time. It is important to note that although cases of judicial reviews and authority disputes are not bound by a time limit, the court had made serious efforts so that all cases can be resolved immediately. However, the duration of the settlement of cases not only depend on the court itself, but depends on the litigants in the case. With regard to the number of laws reviewed based on cases registered in 2021, as many as 48 laws were petitioned for review. And of these, five laws were most frequently requested for review. Number one, the law number seven of 2017 on general elections, and law number 11 of 2020 on job creation. They were reviewed nine times each. The criminal code was reviewed four times and the law number 19 of 2019 regarding the second amendment to the corruption eradication commission law and law number 37 of 2004 on bankruptcy and the suspension of debt payment obligations were each tested three times distinguished guests. Next, for cases of the 2020 regional elections, which were decided in 2021, the court received applications that were submitted online as opposed to in-person in of these applications the court received 153 cases with the following details. Nine cases of gubernatorial and deputy gubernatorial elections, 130 cases of the election of regents and deputy regents, including two cases coming from the Yalimo district of Papua, which were registered on December 21st, 2021, 
and were decided on January 25, 2022, as well as 14 cases of elections of mayors and deputy mayors. All of the smooth running of, of activities and the achievements of the court cannot be separated from the optimal support of the Office of the Registrar and the Secretariat General in providing tools and technology-based applications. For that reason, apart from or in addition to thanking the Constitutional Court Justices for all their efforts in carrying out the mandate of the 1945 Constitution. I also express my appreciation and gratitude to Mr. Registrar and Mr. Secretary General and all their staff for their contributions and hard work. Distinguished guests, the next point that I would like to convey is about the program that were carried out outside of case handling, or they are called non-judicial aspects, but also supported significantly, including the development of information and communication technology, the increasing in the understanding of the citizens' constitutional rights, the strengthening of the organization and institution, research and studies, domestic and foreign cooperation, dissemination strategy massively about the court, bureaucratic reform, the strengthening of the anti-corruption culture, the reorganizing of restructuring of digital archives, all have been implemented excellently. It should be reported that apart from being the guardian of the Constitution, the court also exercises the function as the guardian of ideology. And this function through the Panchasila and Constitution Education Center the court organizes programs and activities to increase the understanding and awareness of the values of Panchasila and the Constitution. In 2021, 16 activities were organized. They were activities to increase the understanding of the constitutional rights of citizens, technical guidance on procedural laws on judicial reviews of laws, and technical guidance on legal drafting among others. If we add them up by the end of 2021, as many as 33,149 participants from various circles of society. They were spread throughout Indonesia, participated in programs and activities with more and various activities with massive number of participants. We hope that the public understanding of the values of Panchasila and the Constitution can actually be improved. In line with that, in order to increase the understanding of the citizens, uh, citizens of their constitutional rights, the court has also endeavored to carry out information dissemination and public education through 66 icons divided into three groups, namely individual rights, collective rights, and the rights of vulnerable groups. In addition to that, the court has continued to improve the quality and reach of cooperation with various parties, both domestically and abroad. Together with universities, as intellectual partners, the court has increased its cooperation through the signing of a number of memorandums of understandings 
among other things, to support remote online sessions, facilitating the presence of 53 mini courtroom smart board devices in 50 universities and three villages designated by the court as constitutional villages. In terms of foreign cooperation, the court has enhanced and expanded its cooperation bilaterally, regionally, and globally. Bilaterally, the court has built and developed cooperation with various other constitutional courts and leading universities in various countries to hold programs to increase human resources competence and institutional capacity. At the regional level, the court continues to maintain an active role in the AACC, the Association of Asian Constitutional Courts and Equivalent Institutions, together with the Turkish Constitutional Court, the Constitutional Council of Algeria, the Supreme Court of Pakistan, and the Supreme Court of Gambia, the court has initiated the establishment of judicial cooperation in countries under the Organization of Islamic Cooperation by hosting the second conference of the Judicial Conference of Constitutional and Supreme Courts and Councils of the OIC in September 2021. At the global level, the court played a role in the World Conference on Constitutional Justice, or WCCJ, which consists of worldwide constitutional courts. Based on the agreement of the members of the WCCJ, the court has been trusted and has been appointed as the host of the fifth WCCJ Congress, which will be held in October this year in Nusa Dua, Bali, where, God willing, it will be attended by no less than 118 countries. For that, the court has undertaken coordination and preparation to welcome the members as well as to make this grand event a success. Distinguished guests, in regards to the 2021 budget, the court's budget ceiling is 313 billion 481 million 301 thousand rupees. The budget is allocated for two programs. They are the management support program and the implementation of other technical tasks amounting to 177 billion. 52 million 36,000 rupees and the constitutional case handling program amounting to 136 billion 429 million 265,000 rupees from that ceiling budget realization at the end of 2021 was a 300 and ten billion one hundred and sixty million six hundred and sixty eight thousand and eighty two rupees or equivalent to ninety eight point ninety four per cent in terms of the management of the budget in two thousand and twenty one the court again received the unqualified opinion it was awarded the unqualified opinion for the financial statements of the 2020 fiscal year this means that the court has been awarded the unqualified opinion for 15 consecutive years since 2006 this is an achievement in the management of state finances in addition, in 2021, the court also received a number of awards, namely the Public Information Disclosure Award from the Central Information Commission, 
as a public body in the informative category. Number two, the award from the Ministry of State Apparatus Utilization and Bureaucratic Reform as the public service provider in the excellent category. Number three, the Budget Performance Award in the group of state ministries and agencies, the category of small ceiling. There's the predicate of very good merit system from the State Civilian Apparatus Commission. Number five, the State Employment Body Award for the achievement of the implementation of the Employment Service Application System and the utilization of the Computer Assisted Test. Number six, the BMN Award for the category of Quality, quality Reporting Group One and the court won the predicate of corruption-free zone for the Center of Information and Communication Technology at the Center for Pancasila and Constitution Education. Distinguished guest, all of the achievements of the court in 2021 will be a starting point for efforts to continue to improve the performance. And for this reason, there are a few things that we need to emphasize as the court's projection for 2022. First, until the end of January 2022, the court has registered 16 cases of judicial review of laws. This is an indication of the potential rise in the number of cases that the court will have to handle in 2022. That is why the management of case handling and hearing handling, we are demanded to preserve or improve the quality and speediness of our performance in line with digital transformation steps that we have, are, and will execute. Secondly, facing the simultaneous general elections in 2024, the Constitutional Court will undertake preparations in various aspects that will be much more optimal if they start from this year of 2022. Providing facility and infrastructure that are sufficient and adequate must be able to be done to help meet the needs for the smooth handling of cases of disputes of those general election results. And for that, the support and cooperation and the trust that you have placed in us by all of you here and all of stakeholders is expected. The third, as was mentioned in October of this year, the court will be hosting the fifth Congress of the World Conference on Constitutional Justice in Nusa Dua, Bali, which will be attended by no less than representatives of 118 countries. And for that reason, the prayers and support from all stakeholders are the main motivation for the court to carry out its mandate to smoothly provide the greatest benefit for the interest of the nation and state. Distinguished guests, facing the challenges of digital transformation in 2022, we again ask for your prayers and support. And hopefully the court can continue to be able to respond to the public's expectations, improve institutional quality, build partnerships more effectively, and continue to gain public trust amidst the culture and digital justice ecosystem which is expected to be more established and to be stronger. To conclude the submission of this annual report, I officially launch the book of the Constitutional Court's annual report 2021 entitled Digital Transformation for Constitutional Upholding. Hopefully, 
this report can be useful. You can also reflect the values of transparency as well as our starting port, a, a point for the court to achieve more progress this year and the years to come. May God Almighty always give us strength and facility for all of us to carry out and achieve our goals for the benefit of the nation and the state. In line with that, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank the President and all of you who are present here offline and online for all of your attention, along with my apologies for any shortcomings and mistakes. May God give us success and guidance. May peace be upon you, along with God's blessings and mercy. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to respectfully invite His Excellency the President of the Republic of Indonesia to deliver his remarks. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. May peace be upon us all. Om Swastiastu. Nama Buddhaya. Distinguished Excellency Chief and Deputy Chief of the Constitutional Court and Constitutional Court Justices, distinguished leaders of state institutions, distinguished Chief of Constitutional Courts in Asia, Excellencies, Ambassadors of Friendly Countries, Distinguished Ministers of the Advanced Indonesia Cabinet, Chief of the Indonesian Armed Forces and Indonesian National Police. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful that even during the pandemic situation, all state institutions have the same determination to work faster, to work in a more flexible manner, as well as being nimble. I also wish to appreciate the Constitutional Court who have used the pandemic situation to accelerate the transformation, adapting with technological advances and readying itself for a transformation to digital court system as have been mentioned by the chief of the constitutional court. I see that there is a clear determination to provide better services to the public, to make access easier for justice seekers in order to ensure the supremacy of law, as well as the preservation of humanitarian interest. I'm certain and I believe that with the ongoing transformation, the Constitutional Court will find its momentum to take a giant step for a great leap ahead 
cementing its role as guardian of the constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, in the past two years, we have witnessed a dynamic situation in our constitutional landscape. Many countries have decided to take steps and extraordinary measures to respond to the crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is a challenge as well as a test to our constitutional practice. The crisis situation has forced the government to take quick and accurate response to introduce flexible and more responsive manners by putting the people's safety first as our first priority. However, I wish to underline that these extraordinary measures that have been taken by the government in responding to the pandemic were carried out with prudence and careful considerations, ensuring that all the measures taken are within the boundaries of law and constitution. The government ensures that all the measures taken, regulations, as well as policies, they can have been considered and decided based on actual and measured reasonings as well as objective reasonings based upon sound considerations to deal with the crisis and save the people as well as the nation. It is never in the minds of the governments to make COVID-19 as an excuse for the government to, to deliberately take in constitutional steps, not observing procedures as well as democratic constitutional values. As a state of law, we must together uphold the law, justice, for the interests of the people and the advancement of our nation. Indeed, the government does not always see eye to eye with the constitutional court in its decisions. However, the government always accepts, respects, and implements the constitutional court decisions because this is what is regulated in the 1945 constitution that stipulates that the constitutional decisions as final and binding the government believes that the life of a nation will be better served if it is carried out in accordance with the constitution Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that the Constitutional Court can continue to make decisions that provide a solution to our nation's problem in upholding the Constitution and continue to create a balance between certainty, justice, and utility. It is not enough for the Constitutional Court decision to only provide legal certainty, but it also has to provide the sense of justice. However, certainty and justice are not also sufficient. Whatever we decide must provide a utility to the life of our nation state and provide a great contribution to the prosperity of the people and advancement of our country in the nation. I believe that covers all of the points that I wish to convey today. I hope Allah, the Almighty, can bless us and ease our way to make advanced Indonesia. I thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Om Shanti Shanti Om. Namo Buddhaya.
to ask for for the God Almighty blessings for this plenary session. Let us bow our heads and extend our prayers, asking for guidance and also protection from God the Almighty. And now I would like to invite the Constitutional Justice, Dr. Wahihuddin Adams, to lead us in prayer. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Indonesia, Bapak Insinyur Haji Joko Widodo, distinguished audience, ladies and gentlemen, to accompany all of our efforts and to extend all of our hopes, let us extend our gratitude and our prayers, our hope to God the Almighty based on our own belief and conviction. With your permission, I would like to lead us in prayer based on the Islamic ways. God Almighty, the most compassionate today, we gather in the special plenary session of the Constitutional Court with the agenda of the submission of the 2021 annual report that has been completed in a most solemn and smooth way. May you pour your blessings and grace to this session. This event is convened as our gratitude to all of your blessings for all of the achievements and the implementations of the Constitutional Court programs in 2021. With this gratefulness, we hope that you can pour to us more blessings and you can also bless us in all of our efforts. The submission of report is also part of our introspection and reflection for all of our shortcomings. For us to improve our performance in the next years. God the Almighty, the most compassionate for all your powers and for all your love in 2021. The Constitutional Court has handled 277 cases and thank God 253 cases have been ruled including 151 rulings on electoral disputes. God who always guide us starting from 2022 the Constitutional Court will prepare for the concurrent elections in 2024. Also in 2022, the Constitutional Court will become the host of the fifth Congress of the WCJJ uh, in Nusa Dua, Bali, which will be attended by 118 countries. The ongoing pandemic is one of the situations that make it quite difficult for us to implement and deliver those activities. Therefore, God, please always give us the health, the strength, and the protection, both physically and mentally. 
God the Almighty, please show us the real truth and please provide us with strength to uphold it, to uphold the truth and please show us all the bad and please give us the strength to deliver from it. God the Almighty, you are always protecting us in all of our efforts. Please always protect us in our efforts and also please grant all of our hopes and wishes. You always help us and you always know everything that we do. God the Almighty, please see this event today as a sign of our gratitude. And please help this to serve as a step for better future. Please bless this meeting. And please protect us from all the bad things. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, Constitutional Justice Dr. Wahihuddin Adams. May God the Almighty, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, grant us all of our wishes and prayers, and also facilitate us in our efforts for the sake of the country and the nation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the special plenary session. We would like to extend our highest appreciation to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Indonesia, the Constitutional Justices, the Presidents of the Constitutional Courts, members of AACC and CCJA, Ambassadors of Friendly Countries, members of the Ethic Council of the Constitutional Justices, Chair of the state institutions, ministers of the Advanced Indonesia Cabinet, the Chief of Indonesia Armed Forces, Dean and Rector of the Law Faculty, Editor-in-Chief of all media, journalists, and counterparts and stakeholders of the Constitutional Courts, everyone in the audience who have followed this meeting, both online and offline. I also would like to extend all parties that have facilitated this special plenary session by reciting Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. This special plenary session is adjourned. Thank you. We would kindly ask the President of Republic of Indonesia and also the Constitutional Justices to approach the group picture backdrop. Please rise, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>